Well, hey, everybody. God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you again from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today I am continuing on a series of messages called Teach Us Your Ways. And today specifically, I'm going to talk to you and speak to you on the topic of you have been transferred. How many of you know you've been transferred? Well, maybe you didn't know it, but today you're going to find out that you have been transferred by God. And uh, it's really important for you to understand where you've been transferred from and where you have been transferred into. And so uh, we're going to jump right into this. Again, if you're joining me on Facebook uh, or on uh, YouTube, my the, on YouTube, make sure you click share uh, this message with other people. Make sure you just give your comments in the chat. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Crop K R O P P. And when you get there, click uh, the subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any of these messages. So again, now today for you, as you are jumping on right now, I'm talking about you have been transferred. Well, some of you have already figured it out, right? You figured out that it's probably a verse that you've read before. Yes, that's right. It's found in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. I'm going to read it to you in three different versions of the Bible. Here's what it says. He, speaking of God the Father, has delivered us. This is the English Standard Version. He, God the Father, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Here it is in the New American Standard Version. For he, God the Father, again, rescued us. Praise God, you've been rescued from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And here it is in the Amplified Version of the Bible. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Let's pray, and we'll jump right into it. Father, once again, we thank you for the finished work of the cross. We thank you uh, that today you're going to give us revelation, insight, understanding that's going to transform us and going to empower us to live the kingdom lifestyle. And so, Lord, we invite you right now. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to guide us and lead us into all truth. And we promise to give Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, in order for you and I to understand who we are, why we're here, what we are to do, we must first understand that we've been taken out of the kingdom of this world, which is controlled by Satan and his forces, and placed into the kingdom of God's Son. Now, you and I, when we're born, we're born into this world, and we immediately come under the dominion of Satan. The Bible says, and Jesus himself said, that Satan is the ruler of this world. So if you wonder why all the bad things that are happening, going on in the world, the wars, the rumors of wars, the murders, the uh, the all kinds of evil things that are happening, it's not because God's running the world, it's because the devil is dominating the world. It's his dominion. Uh, and so you and I are born into the dominion of Satan. But when you and I give ourselves to Jesus, guess what? We get transferred out of the kingdom of darkness. That's what it calls, uh, what Colossians says is the kingdom of Satan. It's the kingdom of darkness. We get transferred out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of God's son. So you and I, have been functioning. Now, here it is. When you and I, uh, we grow up all our life, however long you, you know, maybe you got saved when you were five years old, or maybe when you're 50 years old, I don't know, but however long you've been uh, in the world uh, before you were saved, then you were being programmed in your thinking. You were being programmed in how you look at life and how you believe it's the right way to act. Uh, and so you, there are certain laws uh, that Satan puts into uh, into our minds of how we think things ought to happen, how we think things ought to go. And so we've been learning and functioning, acting by the laws and the culture and the principles and the ways of the world, okay? So the world is a culture. Maybe you've traveled, I don't know, 
if you have or not, but I've traveled in 41 different countries. And one of the things I found in these different countries is that every country has a culture. And that culture determines how the people see life, how they think, how they interact with one another, how they treat one another, how they think about themselves. It's all being controlled by culture. But remember, all the cultures of the world. The Bible says that in Revelations that there's a point when all the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. And so, but culture is the way you look at the world around you. But now what happens is when you are born again, the Bible says that you are transferred or you are taken out of the kingdom of the world, the kingdom of darkness, and you're brought into a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so guess what? The kingdom of God has new laws. It has a new culture. It has new ways. And so when we come into this new culture, and that this is the thing, this is why the Bible says we need to uh, to renew our minds with the Word of God is that we're coming into a new culture that we have never functioned in before. And so guess what? That's why in my last session, again, I'm going to go back to the last session, I talked about a prayer that Moses prayed and a prayer that David prayed, prayed and King David, and the prayers were, Lord, teach us your ways. And so why would we pray that prayer? Because listen, we've been totally functioning, our whole thinking process, our whole worldview process has been controlled by our thinking and our view of how life is from the world or the kingdom of darkness perspective. So uh, now we have been transferred into the kingdom of God's Son. And so because we do that, we have to learn the ways of the kingdom. Now, here's an interesting thing. Here in America, we have lived under a de democratic culture or democracy culture mindset uh, and, and have been living under a, um, and so now we've been transferred into the kingdom culture, and guess what? That mindset is foreign to us. Because we've been grown up in a democracy where we believe that Everyone has rights, and we do believe that. Everyone has freedom. Everyone has a choice to make on their own. We don't think in terms of what it's like to live in a kingdom. When you live in a kingdom, guess what? There's a king of the kingdom. And, uh, and I'm going to define that here. I'm going to talk about in just a little bit here, what is the kingdom of God? And so God intends for the church to be an example of the kingdom culture. So uh, in fact, in Matthew 24, when Jesus talked about the end times, Matthew 24, 14, he said this. He said, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, I don't believe Jesus, I believe every word that Jesus said is important. So when he, he didn't say, and the gospel will be pro proclaimed in the whole world, as a testimony, and then the end will come. He said, no, the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And so the gospel of the kingdom, what's the gospel of the kingdom? It's about the what is the kingdom of God. It's about the good news of the kingdom. And so we, you and I, have been transferred, praise God, we've been taken out of the dominion of the devil, and we brought into the dominion of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords, right? Those of you that are joining me, I'm talking about we've been transferred. And what it is is that we've been transferred into a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And the ways of the kingdom are different than what we've grown up with and our thinking. And so we have to if we're going to progress in what God has for our lives, if we're going to be who we're supposed to be, if we're going to do what we're supposed to do in this life, we're going to accomplish the mission for which God has given us throughout this life, we have to understand the ways of the kingdom. So here are some things that we're going to have, have to learn. We're going to have to learn the kingdom way of living, right? I'm just going to fire off a bunch of these and won't we'll teach on these just right now, but we have to learn the kingdom way of living. What's, what's that? It's living by faith. We have to learn the kingdom way of thinking, and that is to renew our minds with <clears throat> the word of God. That's why it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, don't be conformed 
right? Listen to this. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What is he talking about there? He's saying you've been conformed. In other words, you've been controlled and manipulated by the ways of this world. But now what you need to do is renew your mind with the word of God and so that you understand how to function in the kingdom of God. So it's we have to change our thinking. We have to have the mind of God. The Bible says we are to have, that we have the mind of Christ. The word says we are to set our mind on things above and not on things that are on this earth. So there's plenty of scriptures that talk about that. Another thing that needs to happen is we need to understand the kingdom way of seeing, the kingdom way of seeing, seeing things from God's perspective, seeing ourselves from God's perspective, seeing other people from God's perspective, seeing our situations and our circumstances and our trials in life from God's perspective. Another way to say it is that we need to have discernment uh, in as we go through this life. Another thing is the kingdom way of hearing. We're used to just hearing from all kinds of sources and people and watching the news and reading books or whatever it is that you hear. But what we do in the kingdom, we need to hear God's voice. That's right. My sheep will hear my voice and another they will not follow. Then there's the kingdom way of talking. That's right. We, we talk different in the kingdom than we do have in the world. In the kingdom, uh, we speak in agreement with God's word, right? And so we have to renew our mind with the word so we can begin to change what we say, because the Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And the Bible talks about the word of faith that is in our mouth, that is the word of God in our mouth, that we begin to speak. Uh, and you know what? God's word is uplifting, it's building. We're, the Bible says when you speak, you're supposed to speak and give grace to those that hear you as you speak. In other words, the kingdom way of speaking is a is an uplifting, building way of speaking. And then, of course, we have the kingdom attitudes, which is found in Matthew chapter 5, which is the Beatitudes. If you want to understand the kingdom attitudes, then we have the kingdom way of relationships, which is to walk in love with one another, walk in agape love. And agape love is different than the, our kind of love in the world. Agape love is a lay down your life for your friends kind of love. Then we have the kingdom way of acting. What's that? That's glorifying God in everything that we do. We have the kingdom way of guidance. What's that? It's being led by the word of God and the spirit of God. We have kingdom power and authority. What is that? The power of the Holy Spirit and the authority that we have in Christ. Again, once you get transferred, those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about that we've been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love. And if we're going to understand understand God's ways, we have to understand that we're in a new kingdom. That's right. And so we have kingdom thinking, kingdom talking, kingdom seeing, kingdom hearing, kingdom listening, so on. Uh, another one is that we, uh, that we have a kingdom response, and that is that we are to respond in obedience and submission to the king's authorities. Now, I know when I start talking about this, it's going to go against your flesh. Our flesh doesn't want to submit to anybody or anything, but guess what? You're in the kingdom of God now, and the kingdom of God requires obedience and submission to the king's authority if you're going to fulfill it. You say, well, I don't want God to ruin my life. No, you've already done that. You don't need any help. Uh, from anybody to ruin your life. When you give your life over to Jesus, the, Jesus said, he who loses his life will find his life, right? If you're trying to hold on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you're going to find life. And so we have a benevolent king. We have a king who loves us, who's for us and not against us, a king who wants the very best. Not only that, he knows everything about us and he knows what's going to fulfill us, what's going to make us feel like we've accomplished everything we're supposed to accomplish in life, but it requires us to have a kingdom response, which is obedience and submission to the king's authority. Now, don't turn me off at this point in time. Come on. You say, I don't, I don't think I wanted to hear this message. No, you do. You want to understand that you've been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's son. Then there's the kingdom perspective. 
You see, the kingdom has a perspective, and that is the Bible says that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. We view things, we view the world from a heavenly perspective, from a kingdom perspective, seated with him, ruling and reigning with him uh, in the heavenly places. And then we have, of course, kingdom strategies. In other words, there are strategies that God wants us to understand, and that is God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So with all that, let me... Uh, let me try to answer the question, and that is, what is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? So we've been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's own son. So what is the kingdom of God? That's a good question, right? Well, here it is. A kingdom, uh, the word kingdom means the king's domain, the king's domain or the king's territory. A kingdom is everything over which the king rules. A kingdom is everywhere and everyone who is under the king's dominion or authority. So you, without realizing, you say, well, I, I, was in, I, I think I was doing my own thing and free uh, it, when I was in the devil's kingdom. No, you weren't. He was subtly controlling your thinking. He wants to control your actions. He wants to just steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, in Jesus' kingdom, he says he came to give us life and life more abundantly. So you want to get under the right king, right? But the fact is that a kingdom is everywhere and everyone who is under the king's dominion or authority. So what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's domain, or God's territory. The kingdom of God is everything and everyone who God rules over. So here it is. That's, you know, we have, people have separated uh, by saying, you know, when you get saved, uh, you know, it says you need to, you know, be saved and then make Jesus king. Well, I believe they're one and the same, that when you give your life to Jesus, he becomes king over your life. And not that you're making him king, he is king. And so uh, so when uh, we give our life to Jesus, and then again, this is, goes against our thinking as Americans, where we want to do whatever we want to do and go wherever we want to go and think whatever we want to think. And yes, we have that freedom. Yes, you have a free will, but you can take your free will and you can choose, you know what, I want Jesus to be king over my life. And so uh, when we give our life to Jesus, we're coming under the kingship of Jesus. So the kingdom of God is everything and everyone who God rules over. The kingdom, again, is everywhere that Jesus is king. All right. So, you know, how do I know that I'm in the kingdom? Well, is Jesus king in your life. I'm not talking about now, are you born again or are you not? Are you saved? Are you going to heaven or not? I'm talking about that, that if you want to function in the kingdom of God, you have to acknowledge and and accept the fact that Jesus is king in your life. And you need to determine seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? The kingdom of God is where the will of God is being done. That's another aspect of what the kingdom it is. So the kingdom is where God's plan, God's will is being done. Another thing about the kingdom is that the kingdom of God is invisible to the natural senses. So the world, the people of the world uh, cannot see the kingdom of God. So let me go on to another question, all right? Those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about we've been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's Son. So what is the location of the kingdom? So where's that? Where's God's kingdom located? Well, first off, uh, Jesus said that his kingdom was not of this world. So it's not an earthly kingdom. It will become an earthly kingdom when Jesus comes back and sets up the new Jerusalem on the planet earth. And he, and then it says that all the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of our God. So there is a future kingdom uh, happening where the world will become the kingdom of God, but right now it is not. Jesus said in John 18, verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that 
I should not be delivered to the Jews, but, but now my kingdom is not from here. So the kingdom of God, where is it located? Number one, it's not of this world. <clears throat> Another thing about the kingdom of God, as I've already mentioned, and that is that the kingdom is invisible. You can't see the kingdom of God. Now, you can perceive the kingdom of God. You can respond to the kingdom of God. You can know the kingdom of God, but to the, to the visible eye, it's, a, it's invisible, right? Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, it says, now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, My, the kingdom does not come with observation. So in other words, the kingdom, uh, number one, is it's not of this world. Number two, it's invisible. You can't see the kingdom. So then where is the kingdom? Well, Jesus told us in Luke 17, verses 20 and 21, he said this, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom is a king, the kingdom is inside of us. The kingdom is in us. Another version says it's in our midst. So in other words, it's the corporate gathering of the people of God, where the kingdom of God comes in our midst. But here, the kingdom of God is inside of you. Another place where we see that the kingdom is, is that the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17. I bet you've heard this verse. And that is, it says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace. Come on, you're already saying it with me. And joy, where? In the Holy Spirit. So it's saying that the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. So that's why as we stay in the Holy Spirit, we're to be in the Spirit, we're to live in the Spirit, the Bible says, we're to walk in the Spirit, uh, we're to, to act in the Spirit. Uh, so if we want to be in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. Okay, that makes sense because the Holy Spirit's going to give us guidance and direct us and so on. So uh, those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about that we have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's Son, and we need to understand, if we're going to understand God's ways, we must really settle this issue and have a clear understanding that we have been taken out of this world, we've been taken out of the kingdom of this world, which is ruled by Satan, and we've been brought into the kingdom of the God, the Son of God's love, which is the kingdom of Jesus, okay? So you and I have been transferred. Come on, you got to say right now, I've been transferred. That's right. I've been transferred. I'm no longer under the kingdom of this world, but I'm in the kingdom of God. So <clears throat> I want to just uh, talk for a little bit here about the kingdom atmosphere. So as you and I, as members of God's kingdom, as subjects of God's kingdom, as citizens of the kingdom of God and his family. So it's, it's a family kingdom, by the way. That's another thing that's different about the kingdom of God is that we're all a part of the family of God when we're in the kingdom of God. Well, what is the kingdom atmosphere? Well, again, it's back to this Romans 14, 17. The kingdom atmosphere is, it says, for the kingdom of God, Paul says, is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, right living, right standing with God, peace, the peace of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit or the joy of Jesus. Come on. So what is, so the atmosphere, here it is, that you and I as representatives of the kingdom, and that's what we need to understand, because we've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness, now we are transferred into the kingdom of God. We are representatives, or the Bible says ambassadors, of that kingdom. So we represent the kingdom. And guess what? We are to carry the kingdom atmosphere with us. Okay? So, so what is the kingdom atmosphere? Well, as I said here, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, and we are to, everywhere we go, we are to, it's some of the other things it is, it's the power of God, it's the authority of God, it's the goodness of God, it's the grace of God, the kingdom we carry with us. You and I are to carry the kingdom atmosphere everywhere we go. Uh, here it is. The Bible says in Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, as you go, 
preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he said to his disciples, everywhere you go, you are to acknowledge that when I walk in the door, the kingdom atmosphere comes with me. When I go to the store, the kingdom atmosphere goes with me. When I go to, to, to my class, if you're a student, the kingdom atmosphere. If I go to my job, the kingdom atmosphere goes with me. Wherever you are, you are carrying the atmosphere of the kingdom. So he told his disciples, as you go, this is Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, you are to say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received freely give. So we can see the kingdom atmosphere carries authority and carries power for miracles and signs and wonders. Jesus predicted this in John chapter 7, the gospel of John. Jesus said this, verse 38, he said, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke, it says, concerning the spirit who had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So the kingdom atmosphere is a river that's coming out of you and me that touches people's lives. The kingdom of God is at hand. And so you and I are to be, and we are, remember now we've been transferred into the kingdom of God and we are carriers. Maybe you say, oh, I didn't even realize that. I don't think I've done that. Well, I think you, what God wants us to do is to be aware, just like he said to his disciples, as you go, declare the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and then you begin to activate the kingdom in whatever situation you're in. You go about doing good as Jesus did, healing all that are oppressed of the devil. I know that maybe you say, wow, you are way over my head. That is asking too much. No, if you understand that you're in the kingdom of God, you understand that you're a child of the king, you're a son, you're a daughter of the king, uh, you're in the family of the king, uh, you, are the, you have the kingdom of God residing within you. As you begin to believe that and understand that and acknowledge that and confess that it, over your life, you're going to begin to see the kingdom atmosphere <clears throat> starts to go with you wherever you go. And so when you get up in the morning, you just say, thank you, Jesus, out of my innermost being today is flowing rivers of living water. And then you go out and you get people wet with the kingdom of God. Another thing about the, uh, the kingdom atmosphere is, as I already mentioned, it is a atmosphere of the power of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, uh, Paul writes, and he says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So when you carry the kingdom atmosphere, you're carrying the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I want to bring this to a close, and I want to talk about one more thing. Those of you that are joining me, I've been talking about that you and I have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's own son, the son of God's love. And because we've been transferred into this new kingdom, we need to learn the ways of the kingdom. We need to have kingdom thinking, kingdom seeing, kingdom understanding, uh, kingdom response, kingdom uh, power. We need to function in this kingdom that God has now transferred us into, uh, we need to have the kingdom kind of love. We need to have the kingdom way of acting. We need to walk in the authority of the kingdom. Uh, we need to activate the strategies of the kingdom. So those things are to we, are to, we are to learn about and we learn how to function in. So I don't know where you are in your walk with Jesus, but I'm being challenged myself Jesus said in the last days, this gospel of the kingdom would be preached in all the world and then the end would come. So I believe that where we're going as the church of Jesus Christ uh, is that we are to be doing what I call show and tell. We are to manifest the kingdom of God, that the, the gospel of the kingdom is not just a word gospel, although the gospel is words, but it's also a demonstration gospel, demonstration demonstrating the power of God's kingdom. And God wants you to understand you've been transferred into this kingdom. You are now a citizen of the kingdom. You're a subject of the kingdom. You're a child of the kingdom. That's right. You're a son or a daughter of the kingdom of God. And so you've been transferred, but you got to renew your mind. You got to change. You got to begin to think like the kingdom. You got to begin to understand like the kingdom. You got to discern like the kingdom. You got to 
tune into hearing God's voice, which to me is the simple key. How do I walk in the kingdom? You hear God's voice and you do what he says. We need to have the kingdom attitudes, the be attitudes, and we need to have an understanding of that we are submitted to a king in this kingdom. Now, one last thing I want to just share before I close, and that is that the number one, think about this, what was the number one prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray? I bet you're going to figure that out real quick here. What was the number one prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray? It's found in Luke chapter 11, also in Matthew chapter 6, but in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, it says this, as it says, it came to pass as he, Jesus, was praying in a certain place that when he ceased and when he finished his prayer, that one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John the, uh, you know, John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. So the disciple comes and says, Lord, uh, we notice that you pray and after you pray, all kinds of miracles and signs and wonders happen. Why? Because Jesus came representing the kingdom of God and he manifested the kingdom wherever he went. If you go back and say, what did Jesus preach? He preached the kingdom of God and demonstrated the kingdom of God. So here now the disciples are watching him pray. And then one of them says, Lord, would you teach us to pray uh, just the way John taught his disciples? So Jesus said to them, here you are. Here's the number one prayer. When you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the number one thing in all your praying and all your asking, what you want to include and make a major focus on in your prayers is God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on my earth as it is in heaven. So our prayer, again, is now focused on the fact that we've been transferred in to the kingdom of God, and we are to go out and, and activate the keys of the kingdom. We are to go, the Bible says, I will build my church, Jesus said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then he said to Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever things you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever things are loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. So he's telling Peter, you are going to go and you're going to manifest the kingdom wherever you go. You need to understand, you, Peter, you're in a new kingdom now. All right, well, I hope this was helpful uh, for everyone here. And uh, I just want to finish by praying for us. In the next session, I'm going to begin to be talk about some of the laws of the kingdom. What are some of we're, we're in this new kingdom. Uh, how do I function? So I'm going to just begin to share with you some laws that literally changed my life when I began to understand that in the kingdom of God, there are certain ways the kingdom of God functions. I call them the laws of the kingdom, not like legalistic laws. It's not, that's not that at all. It's not like, you know, we're not under the law, but there are laws that govern the kingdom of God. And as you and I learn those laws, then guess what? We're going to learn how to function with them. And guess what? There's huge blessings and benefits as we begin to cooperate with the laws of the kingdom. So let's pray right now as we close. And let's say that prayer over us right now. And again, thank you, those of you joining me. Thank you for that. And make sure you click share. But okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you. And we just want to agree with Jesus' prayer in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. We pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in me on earth. Lord, make me a representative of your kingdom. Help me to understand that I've been transferred. I'm no longer under the dominion of Satan. I'm now under the dominion of Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for that. And I thank you. I just feel an anointing right now as I'm praying this prayer. I just believe as you begin to pray this prayer, you're going to begin to see the kingdom of God activated in and through your life. Lord, I ask for that activation of the kingdom of God, Lord, that we would fulfill Matthew 24 in the last days. It says this gospel of the kingdom would be preached in all the world, and then the end would come. God, we pray that over our brothers and sisters in Christ, over all around the world, all the things that are going on in the world around us, in every nation, God, we pray for the kingdom of God to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. Well, again, God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Again, this is Fred Krupp.
coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. I'll leave my email there. You can email me your comments. Also, I'll leave a link for my YouTube channel where you can go back and listen to the messages. I'm in a series of messages called Teach Me Your Ways. So in the meantime, I want you to know that Jesus loves you, I love you, and the Father loves you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.